You're watching Bread and Roses, a weekly political social magazine that's broadcast in English and Persian via New Channel TV. Hello everyone, I'm Mariam Namazi. And I'm Faribur Puyo. In this week's program, we'll have an interview with Hamid Tagway, leader of the World Communist Party of Iran, on Paris attacks. This will actually be a special on this attack. Uh, we'll be discussing the different dimensions of it. Don't go away, stay with us. We were all very shocked and outraged when we heard about the attacks on Paris uh, just last week. Uh, you know, obviously, it's it's a lot of human emotions come out. You you mourn all the people who've died. Only, you know, they were only going about their daily business, going to cafes, going to concerts, and you know, to know that they're never going to go back home. And it's it is very heart wrenching. Um, and particularly when you know that this is not an isolated incident, this is happening just in this past month. It's happened in many cities across the globe. It's happened in Afghanistan, it's happened in Iraq, it's happened in Nigeria, in Mali, and on and on and on. And every single one of these incidents has so much tragedy in a way uh, and sadness. At the same time, there's a lot of, uh, while there's anger and frustration, at the same time, opens up the debate and people start looking for solution and the human response to this is amazing because majority of people see what for this for what it is is cruel is barbarity and is inhumane basically and sometimes it's good to actually see that we have a very short video of a conversation with a child have a look at this before we continue this discussion When you hear this child speaking, I, I mean, it does really hit home, you know, the, the terror and the horror of this trage tragedy for so many people, including people who are not directly involved. It affects the psyche of an entire society. And in a way, it makes you think about, you know, all those people who are fleeing Syria, for example, fleeing Iraq, fleeing Afghanistan, fleeing Iran, because it's not just the jihadis that are the problem, but it's Islamism, you yeah. know, by its Sharia laws. The effects that this sort of rule has on people's psyche is immeasurable really. And people try to look for various sort of defense uh, mechanism to protect uh, society and very clearly and people recognize the solution is not to ban refugees for example and very clearly the uh, right message is coming out that refugees are not to uh, blame and to shut the doors when people are fleeing from this situation is morally wrong, politically wrong, um, and socially wrong, on yeah. all aspects of things. And wrong. also, I mean, what, what happens is if you start blaming refugees or even Muslims, what you do is you're playing into this identity politics that actually the Islamists use in order to advance. Because the reality is that people are people, they have different points of views, and many of those people who are fleeing, as well as many Muslims, abhor Islamism and are resisting it in various ways. And, and we've seen this in, in many form and disguise. People have come out um, and uh, they've shown solidarity um, with the immediate people who've actually suffered and with, with France. I think that's the outpour of solidarity is amazing and that, that, that's something we need to cherish. At the same time, people try to look for solutions. Um, one solution is complete bombardment of Syria. I mean, there are people who actually advocate this. Um, that's Im immediately that might sort of relieve some sort of anger, but that's not a solution really. Uh, to people talk about political solution. And underneath this political solution, actually it's a bit of a corrupt drive to compromise with Assad, Islamic regime, get again, again the yeah, Islamic regime of Iran, and exactly the people who are party to creating the condition for rise of ISIS and this barbarity to come back again and reconfigure themselves. That's not a solution. Yeah. 
what we I think that the solution is clearly a, a human solution. You know, I think it's that sort of outpouring of humanity and solidarity. It's going across borders and boundaries, seeing the humanity in all of us. I think, you know, uh, Western governments cannot have a solution to this crisis because, as you say, they are part of the problem in a way. Uh, it's about, you know, moving beyond the sort of identity politics, the sort of divisions, not looking at it as a clash of civilizations, but a clash between many of us, whether that we're, we live in Far Paris or, or Tehran or Bamako or Baghdad or Kabul versus the religious right. Uh, absolutely. And this is not sort of um, airy fairy demand for, oh, let's, let's love humanity sort of thing. This is immediately there is a solution that our forces currently in Syria who fighting both ISIS and Assad, we need to identify. There are clearly, I mean, all the refugees who run away from uh, Syria, that's, that's a, a, a one part of this a solution to actually support and make sure that their demands and protection of the right is, um, is guaranteed. Within Iraq, for example, which is part of this uh, situation, there's huge demonstrations for secularism and civilized society. That needs to be supported, not the government of the Islamic regime or the current govern government in, in Iraq. In Iran, exactly the same situation. In, in, in Turkey, you see this. Yeah. The, the solution is real and is very close. It's not far away. Yeah. And, and we need to highlight this. And, uh, and any solution, any agreement or any situation needs to guarantee the basic human uh, standards that we need to have. I think the thing is too that people shouldn't feel that this is an attack on you know Parisian values. It's attack on human values or or French values. You, you hear that in the media a lot. This is an attack on human values. It's taking place across the globe. And there are many, many allies in this fight, including you know people who protested, as you mentioned, in Iraq for secularism, saying neither Sunni nor Shia. It's all those hundreds of thousands of people who came out in Afghanistan, uh, saying uh, you know that they're opposed to religion's role in the state and society. So you know there there is a real movement that exists against the Islamists. We need to support it. Let's now go to an interview um, with Hamid Tafoi, and he talks about the various aspects. Of of this uh, problem, where it started, how it came about, and also what the political solution is. Stay with us. Amitavai, welcome to our program. I wanted to ask you about the Paris attacks and what your feelings were when you heard about it first. Uh, actually, what I feel, what I think many people feel the same way, was sad, a deep sadness and, uh, and rage and urge for, to, to do something. We have to do something. We cannot afford to have those things happen again in anywhere in the world. I think before going to the politics of the, what, what happened, who was even responsible, who was not responsible, the, the, the act itself, the brutality and atrocity of the, the thing uh, was, I think, uh, uh, shocking, quite shocking for everybody. And I think that was the feeling that everybody uh, had when first heard what happened in, in Paris. And, but we should somehow uh, 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 go forward and uh, uh, find out what sh shall we do, what can we do in order not having such a thing again anywhere. One of the things that people say um, uh, that this is a result of a war between, uh, let's say, the Islamic world versus the Western world, though we're seeing many of these attacks in countries in the Middle East and North Africa. Yeah, it is a war, but it's not a war between Islamists and, and, and West, as they say. Usually they say that it's, it's a war between uh, the uh, Islamic culture or Islamic civilization and, and Western culture. I don't believe in it. I think it is a war between uh, political Islam with their own goals and, 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 and the strategy against uh, humanity against civil society period there is not such a thing as west or east when we refer to the 
human culture. We don't have, look, uh, it happens that we have the last achievement of human culture in West. It happened like this. Uh, uh, but it doesn't mean that it just belongs to people who live in the West. It is the, uh, the last uh, steps of a long march during, uh, uh, in, in the history toward having a better life, more prosperity, more freedom, more equality. The last, last step is socialism, which is created in the West. But nobody can say that freedom is a Western concept. From Spartacus to Middle Ages to today, people are fighting for freedom everywhere. Equality is Western uh, uh, value. It's nonsense. Or equality between men and women, women rights, and uh, so on and so forth. But unfortunately, we, we don't see that, not from the point of view of Islamists, but even from the point of view of, uh, of, of uh, uh, media in the West, uh, governments, and even specialists in the West, that they, they have theories like clashes of civilizations. They have theory that uh, terrorism is when, of course, uh, uh, you can say that they think that we have terrorism when those civilizations clash. Uh, but uh, in Iran, we don't have any clash between anything, but we have the same terror for more than 30 years now. In Saudi Arabia, the same thing. In Syria and Iraq, the same thing. People get killed. Uh, 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 women have no rights. Uh, 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 gay and lesbians have no rights. They, they get ex executed and so on and so forth. So terror is terror. Doesn't matter it's against who, against people in the country that they call it uh, uh, Islamic society or Western society. So that's the main thing. It is a war, but it's a war between the backwardness, a war between the brutality of political Islam against the human culture and human civilization. Uh, so is this more about politics or is it about religion? Because some people will say it's about Islam. This is what... You no, know. it's not about Islam. I think even Daesh uh, that is against infidels instead of being against U.S. You know, that's a big, big difference. Al-Qaeda was against U.S., against the great Satan, as, as Khomeini said. But Daesh never said that. Daesh said you are against kofar or, or infidels, meaning against the other Muslims that we don't believe they are real Muslim or true Muslims. Why Daesh says that? Because it's fighting in, 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 a, in a political blocks in the Middle East. It has nothing to do with the different interpretation of Islam that Shias and Sunnis have. So many people say, now there is a war between Shia and Sunni, Daesh against Islamic Republic. It's not the case. Of course, it's the frame. The frame is Shia and Sunni. But the real politics behind it is Daesh needs fighting against infidels because doesn't want to have a worldwide uh, partisan attack to U.S. Uh, 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 embassies or U.S. benefits as Al-Qaeda said, oh, I am doing that. No, they said we are a state. We want to find land and keep it, have our, our own uh, Osman Caliphate, revive it and have it. And who's against that? Of course, Syria, Islamic Republic. So we have to find other Muslims. So they are infidels. That's the theory that they need. They don't need anything against uh, look, they don't. Islamic Republic says that I have the uh, the banner of uh, 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 people or of uh, uh, Muslims in the world against the world dominance of Great Satan. Daesh never claims that. He says I'm against uh, infidels and fighting Syria, fighting Islamic Republic. Uh, that's a big difference. So even for Daesh, is not only the ideology thing. Of course, Islam is an ideology that let them do that. Because you, if you don't rely on religion, you cannot be brutal. You cannot be that, uh, do those crimes and, and legitimize it and defend it. Like all the world, in the world we had that, in the Middle Ages, in Europe that thing happened. Christianity did so many 
uh, uh, terrible things because of Christ, because of their God, uh, and they are doing the same thing. But only that, that's the role, uh, role of uh, Islam that plays here. But politics, it is a political movement. It's not an ideological movement. It's a political movement. I can claim that the ideology is provided by the West itself, by multiculturalism. Uh, can you explain that? Yeah, look, the ideology that uh, Islamism is uh, uh, led them to flourish and led them to get power is the ideology that our civilization is ours, your civilization is yours. You know, there are two different things. And you have the same right to have the own rules that comes from Quran as we have the rules that comes from wherever we have civil rights or, or our constitution or whatever. So there is a philosophy that the meaning of it that you can have a policy based on the religion, based on the race, based on the tribes. You can have that policy. It's okay. It is even more liberal than what we had against Islam. Now liberalism is on that. Even left, some sort of left we have in the West, that when you fight Islamism as a, a, a anti-human movement, they uh, they call it call you Islamophobia and are against you. So they are uh, helping Islam to grow. I think. So Islamism, its philosophy doesn't come from Quran. Their philosophy comes from the West. And that philosophy, let them do whatever they want because it's our own culture. Because you, you said yourself, Fukuyama wrote the clashes of culture, said, okay, if the clash of culture, that's our culture, clash of civilization. If that we, have, we can have 100 time, different types of uh, civilization, we are one of them. So they couldn't do that just based on their religion. If the people of the world say, don't let religion get involved in the policies, in the society, in the government, then everything was done. Everything was, uh, I mean, at least ideologically, strategically, to have a, a big attack against Islam. But now it's the other way. To open the door for them, of course they come and, and, and claim what they are claiming. That's the thing that happens, I think. So are you, you know, there are some who say Islamism is all the West fault. Is that what you're saying, though? Uh, no, you cannot say that it's the whole West. You, the, in a way, it is. Look, it, as I said, Islamism is against people not only in the West, but maybe more against the people in the East. And the problem with the West is that just doesn't recognize that. The crime is done by Islamism, Islamists, and you have to blame the, the, the force that does the, those crimes. You cannot blame anybody else that you just created the situation that they do that. You never say that. You cannot say that. When you kill somebody, you are the killer. That's all. So in, in this sense, Islamist groups are totally responsible for what, what they are doing. But the thing that is not the terror is not what happened in Paris or New York in September 11 or anywhere else. The terror is happening every day in Iran, every day in Saudi Arabia, every day in Syria, in Iraq, in Afghanistan, and nobody refers to that. Look, right now we have a big movement. Right one day before the uh, uh, Paris attack, we had a uh, de big demonstration in Kabul in Afghanistan, mainly with women and youth with the slogan of new world, new order, new movement. Nobody refers to that. You don't see that in any, any uh, news agency or anywhere. Or for two months or more than that, every Friday, people of Iraq come to street with the slogan of no Sunni, no Shia civil society. You see, people of Middle East, that's maybe the uh, irony of the situation. People in the, of course, people with their own culture, with, with the Islamic culture, are referring to the, uh, uh, the values of French Revolution and Enlightenment when they come to the world, to, to state and say we want a secular society. They say even a civil society. Why? Because the civil society is denied there. Not only we have a, 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 a government like Maliki, which is just a bunch of uh, 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 thieves there, but we have a, 
uh, we don't have any society as such, no civil society. That's why people in the East, in Afghanistan and Iraq, maybe the last places that you can think of, come to street with the slogans that in the West, in Shale Abdo, we just saw that, that, that those sort of uh, slogans. And so I, I think that's the solution. That's the way that we should uh, 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 support. Uh, we should organize. Uh, we should uh, help it to be stronger and stronger. That's the only way that we can uh, solve the problem. One quick last question. And, uh, you know, if you can recap, what is the solution to this military, political? What is the solution to ISIS and these attacks? It's not political, uh, pol uh, uh, military, it's political, but not government policies. It is uh, 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 creating a movement, as I just mentioned. The answer is uh, uh, mobilize people with the values, with the international uh, universal values, which is uh, 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 applying to everybody, anywhere. Forget about clash of civil civilizations or uh, more cultural relativism or, 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 or so on and so forth. We have to, uh, I mean, uh, uh, politically, uh, theoretically, uh, strategically, go and, and fight those ideas, those strategy, and people can listen to you. People know what you are saying. People in the West and in the East, they are together. Governments need those different uh, uh, civilizations and the war between different civilizations. So we have to refer to the people, organize a movement to defend the universal values of people all over the world. Thank you. Thank you. We hope you enjoyed the interview with Hamid Takvoi. I think first, before we go into anything, we need to figure out what the problem is before we can get to a proper solution. And I think we need to look at this movement as the fascism of our era, not just focus on jihadism, but Islamism as a whole, and not to see this as a clash of civilizations between the West and the East, but to see that there are many people resisting, including in the, in the East, and many people collaborating in the West. Absolutely, and everybody is looking for a solution. Some people talk about bombardment, some people talk about uh, stopping refugees, and uh, the reality is needs a political solution, but a political solution, not, com not the same group of people coming and sitting a round table who've actually created this situation to re-compromise again. That's not a solution, it's not going to bring an end to, to ISIS. There is a human solution. Yeah, I mean, it's clear that uh, governments that are part of the problem, whether it's the Saudi government, the Iranian regime, and Western governments that have been working with certain sections of Islamism for a very long time and supporting it, are not part of the solution. It is a human solution. But what is this human solution? I would say one of them is defending the uh, Kurdish fighters in Kobani, for example. They are the real resistance against the fascism of today. I, I agree, and that human resistance is no reason why that sort of desire to have um, higher standards everywhere cannot materialize itself in a, a, a real practic a practical, immediate solution today. You know, if we treat this movement as a fascist movement, you know, remember the Second World War, that people started fighting fascism organized uh, across boundaries of national boundaries and, and, and work together to be able to defeat this. And that call, this movement calls for, again, another anti-ISIS, anti-Islamist uh, movement um, to be able to... Across borders. Across, across borders. borders and, and, and I mean, another practical thing is the fact that there are people with decades of experience in fighting the Islamists in Iran. In Afghanistan, you've got you know mass movement against the Taliban, against the Islamists, against ISIS. In um, Iraq, you've got people coming out for months now saying neither Sunni nor Shia, but secularism and civil society. So we need to start creating real links with these movements and creating a structures for these people to be able to have political influence. The, we we cannot afford to ignore. Uh, this situation anymore is an immediate sort of 
you know, task and we need, we need to do this. Yeah, and one of the things too is moving beyond the sort of identity politics that's regressive, this multiculturalism as a social policy that divides communities um, and doesn't see the resistance and the dissent within so-called Muslim communities and, and in countries outside of Europe. You know, this is not between the West and East, this is between free thinkers, secularists, Democrats, egalitarians across borders, including people who are believers, versus the Islamists and the religious right. And we'll, we'll see this, you know, the, this human um, desire for going beyond all these structures immediately. We, we, we have that picture and yeah, a photo yeah. of the uh, two people in Paris. Yeah, I think it's, it's wonderful. It's uh, someone with a Syrian passport, someone with a French passport, kissing and saying that Ver, you know, as a resistance to this hatred, there is love. And, and in a sense, building that solidarity with people who are fighting hate and promoting human values, you know, real citizenship values, equality, freedoms, irrespective of identity and borders, is the way forward. Uh, you know, we can win this fight, but we have to first find out what the problem really is and we have to work with people, refugees, Muslims, ex-Muslims, non-Muslims, everyone, human beings first and foremost, who are resisting fascism, uh, you know, today in various ways. Uh, we hope you've enjoyed this week's program. We look forward to hearing from you and to hear your thoughts on, on the attacks and what else can be done to resist. Until next week, we hope you have a great week. Goodbye. Goodbye. Hi, I'm Mariam Namazi. And I'm Fadi Bospuya. We're hosting a program called Bread and Roses. It's a weekly program that's broadcast in Persian and English in the Middle East and North Africa, primarily Iran as well. And it's also shown on YouTube internationally. And we've been doing this since last May. We're coming up to our year's anniversary. And yeah. we, we've had quite a lot of fun making these videos. We discussed taboo breaking, free thinking ideas. The Islamic regime of Iran has called us immoral and corrupt. And that's why the, you need to support us. We are and the alternative voice in Middle East and North Africa. Of corruption and immorality. So do support us. Here's a short video from Patreon that explains how you can help us with even just one dollar a week. That's nothing. Support us. Patreon lets fans become patrons of their favorite artists and content creators. It's different than Kickstarter because it's not about one big project that requires lots of funding. It's more for bloggers or YouTubers or webcomics, anyone who creates on a regular basis. Here's how it works. When you become a patron, you're agreeing to give an artist a tip of an amount you set every time they release a piece of content, whether it's a new song, a video, or a recipe. You can set a monthly maximum to make sure that you're always within your budget. Choose an amount, enter your payment information, and you're done. Becoming a patron allows you to view and post in the artist's stream, and in exchange for your support, artists offer additional patron packages, which might include monthly Google Hangouts, music production tutorials, pre-sale concert tickets, or anything they can offer as a way to say thanks. Patreon, empowering a new generation of content creators.